there with that cross from pass to James Egan. If he had got it, he was in for a goal to fall on minor. He's a very direct runner, and uh, he'll give a bit of impetus there on the two. Aidan Fogarty's ball inside is escorted literally over the end line by James Scal. Seconds ticking on the clock. Moves the foot, perhaps along the sideline. Anthony Cunningham, first year in charge, won two senior all Ireland medals himself in 1987 and 88. Captain the Galway Miners to win their first all Ireland title back in 1983. He's been successful with St. Bridget's and Roscommon, with Gary Castle and Westmead. Is it possible that he's going to guide Galway to their very first historic Leinster title? Just about 11 minutes on the clock, still plenty of time. Gathering the ball in his hand is Jonathan Glenn. Gives it into the centre to David Burke. One, two, one behind his name. Ball drops into David Herity. Survives the initial challenge. Gives it to Jackie Terrell. Jackie, All Ireland under 21 captain in 2003, the beat Galway. Knocked down by Johnny Cohen. It's Kip Kenny to try and retain possession. Killian Buckley trying to set up on Larkin. Instead, it comes to Kenny. Quick ball inside towards Damien Hayes. Ball skids off the surface. Kip Kenny man without a hurl. It's Brian Hogan that has the hurl. Sends it back long. Batted down by David Burke, cleverly to Joe Cannon, who clearly called. In the middle of the pitch, he drives the slither long, and David Herity waves it over the end line. The drama continues in Croke Park. A pulsating match. Well, Hard to believe what happened in the first half. <laughs> ten minutes to go now, Marty, and Galway nine points up. Um, you know, it's within themselves to close out the game, and Joe Cannon coming way out the field now, winning another ball, and then... Um, you know, they're making sure they're just playing two inside forwards um, or just one at times and uh, that's causing Kilkenny huge problems and uh, from this point of view, we'd be expecting Galway to go ahead and win it. Change in the Galway team. Niall Burke looks to be the man that's coming off and uh, Pike Harron coming on. So number 25, Pike, ha Pike Harron is on from the Lee Mellows Club in Galway City. And going off is Niall Burke who really started well and uh, has really given his all a little wink but perhaps the job is almost there yeah, but when you're playing Kenny Tony you're never sure yeah, but he, went, he went down about five minutes ago there Marty and seemed to be affected by a leg injury so maybe that's the reason for him coming off Joe Canning dropping this right and right well back in 2010 when they last met in the Leinster final and first and only time there was 31,376 22,171 in Croke Park to witness potential history. Here is Cyril Dunn, four points he scored in the first half. Oh, it hits off the top of the post. Comes back, Empire signals wide. Puck out quickly taken by David Herity. Referee's whistle is blown, he said the puck out was taken too quickly and it's going to be taken again. Brian Cody talks to Mick Dempsey. Is there another change about to happen? Pulled on first time by Tony O'Gregan. Ty Parron gets his first touch and potentially a second. Nipping in, however, is James Regan. The substitutes are working hard. Lovely stick work by Regan. He knows he's going to be hooked if he tries the shot. Stepping up, however, to the mark is Tommy Walsh. Drives it long. In for his Killian Buckley. Dicks for a man. Stepping by the challenge, low ball inside towards Richie Power, but again it dribbles along the surface and out over the end line and wide. Yeah, just a little mix up communication wise there because both Richie Power and Richie Hogan came for the same ball. And if Richie Hogan had gone in behind or Richie Power had stayed where he was, maybe Killian Bucky would have picked him up. But uh, you can see what he was trying to do knock a through ball, and uh, James Scale just escorted it away. Scales puck out, got it down, fine. The Galway team that is really playing with tremendous passion. But that, from their perspective, a little bit disappointing as their tent white. 63 minutes play, seven minutes to go. Nine points between the teams. At half time, there was an 18 point gap. But the All Ireland champions have responded. Despite the loss of Michael Finley in the league final, what a loss he has been. The Kenny's passion and heart once again for the four but you cannot even afford to miss players like Michael Fenley as there's a bit of afters going on here between Aidan Fogarty and David Burke 
But Finlay's loss is huge, uh, Don. Well, you know, uh, you know, hurler of the year last year. You know, I, I've always said a, a box-to-box player fellow who's back in his own 30-meter line defending one minute. He's back up in the, third, the opposing 30-meter line. You know, the next minute he's a huge player, and uh, you know, he'd be a loss to any team. And I suppose Kilkenny, after the double match, felt that. You know, Killian Buckley and Paddy Hogan did very, very well that night, but they were exposed a little bit today. Killian Buckley hurling well in the second half, but you know, Finlay would be a loss, and is a huge loss to Kilkenny. Henry Shafflett. Gets his eight point of the game. 219, 211. Six minutes left. And who has the slipper here? It's Jonathan Dan. Takes too many steps. Three for Kilkenny. And you're never sure that you've beaten Kilkenny, or indeed you've won the Bob O'Keefe Cup until you're on the N17 and you know where you're heading for. Ball down uh, over the sideline. Who touched it last? It would seem to be a Galway ball. Yeah, Jackie Till there trying to find a, a quick ball to uh, Richie Hogan and just screwed out over the line. But um, Galway now with you know six or seven minutes left. Um, you know we're going to be taking time out of everything, freeze, tuck outs. You know just slowing the game down and just making sure they're eight points up and just making sure that they kill the momentum of the game. Ball cut in by Johnny Cole, grabbed superbly by Cyril Donla. Dropping it in, but it's well to the right and wide. That is 11 wides for Galway in this match. Yeah, that's about the fifth wide mark in the last five yeah. minutes. And, you know, if they had got one or two of those, the match was closed out. Loose ball, comes by as Killian Buck, David Collins in close attention. Flicking one into the centre, there's trouble here for Galway. Good blocking down, Matthew Root had an opportunity, comes out first, Neil Dunahill, the referee's whistle is blown. And I'm not too sure what he's giving here, to be honest with you. I think he's saying that, um, you know, one of the Galway players uh, had pulled somebody, well, that there was a little bit of pulling and dragging, and that uh, he's giving the free, and I think, to, to Kilkenny, and he's giving a throw in. Throw ball, in fact. Andy Smith was asking what happened, and he grabs the slither and comes away with it. Comes it down, the wing, Ty Harrod, Noel Hickey with it, Harrod, aware of the challenge coming in. Referee's whistle is blown, said he took too much out of it, free to Kilkenny. There is a nervousness in the Galway camp, one senses, despite having that eight-point advantage. Silly mistakes just being made at the moment, perhaps Damien Hayes, an engineer. A little bit of space for Joe Cannon. Chased by Paul Murphy. Cannon on the ground, trying to hold on. Murphy coming into challenge. Cyril Dunn. Tenacious as always. Getting by Brian Hogan. Knocked off the hurl. Sideline ball for Galway. And the clock ticks towards the 70th minute. A great commitment by Cyril Dunn, and he's had a very, very good game for Galway, and he's been everywhere. He's had Tony O'Regan as well at centre-back, so that'll suit Galway nicely. Take, you know, 20 seconds out of the clock there and, you know, decide what they want to do and, you know, slow it down. And eight points up, referees uh, pointing to the watch now, making them hurry up. But um, I think that Galway will be more of a just to, you know, take things out of it. Joe Canning taking a sideline here. This, this can take up to 30 seconds off the clock at times, Marky, and that's all they're trying to do with this stage, is to kill the game. And Joe Cannon takes it uh, short, as far as Ty Perrin. Well won back by Noel Hickey. Far as Jackie Kerr. Andy Cohen going to backtrack, but Tony O'Gregan says he'll take care of it. Gets by the initial challenge. Floats one in. It's a good ball. Jonathan Glenn gets it almost second time. Killian Buckley, Ryan Hogan. It's Hogan under pressure. Back there is Damien Hayes. Named at left corner forward for roaming all over the place since four o'clock this afternoon. Nice hook by Fergal Moore. Ball slipped off his fingertips over the sideline. Sideline ball for Kilkenny. 68 minutes gone. Eight points between the teams. Surely this is history in the making. Surely Galway can hold on for their very first Leinster title in what undoubtedly has to be the shock of 2012. Going back down, Jackie Tyrrell confronted by James Regan. Goes long, Brian Hogan. 
And there's a chance here for Matthew Root. Takes a shot. And it skids off the surface in Grove Park on the wrong side of the post. And is that perhaps Kilkenny's last chance, last hurrah, on a day when even they must be mesmerised by a first-half performance. They saw Galway score two goals and 12 points to Kilkenny's four points. And Kilkenny, All-Ireland champions, held scoreless for the first 19 and a half minutes. Tony O'Regan, short puck out, two minutes of additional time. The fresh legs of James Regan. Looking outside is Cyril Donlan. Donlan calls for it. Gathers it second time round. Steps inside the challenge. Can he score from there? Yes, he can. It's Fader Lynn, says Cyril Donlan, for his fifth point of the match. And surely, surely now, the Bob O'Keefe Cup, for the very first time in the GA's history, in the Leinster's history, of wonderful hurling. It's going across to Shannon, back to Galway for the very first time. Owen Larkin brings it forward. Galway thinking about introducing another sub. Larkin floats one in. There's a connection. The last man to touch it was a Kilkenny man. And that goes out over the end line. Galway now going to bring in Joseph Cooney, son of legendary Joe Cooney, from the Sarsfields Club, around Boulogne and you win. They love their hurling. Played right half back. Going off is five-point scorer Cyril Donlan from the Parry Pearson's Club, around 13 and Bally Mackworth in his yeah, goal. I think he epitomised the effort today, Marty. He's been very, very good from the start, as, as, as I said, Tony O'Regan and uh, Damien Hayes as well, as well as Joe Canning. They've been excellent and they've um, brought the fight to Kilkenny from the start. Joseph Cooney immediately into the action. Slither in hand. Out away for us, Damien Hayes. Flicks it forward. Scored only one point, but what a hero for Galway this afternoon in Croke Park. We have touched off and gone beyond the 70th minute. Anthony Cunningham, he won the under-21 All-Ireland title last year as manager. Is he about to add the Leinster title to his very impressive and growing CV? And beaten the man that indeed is the king of all managers, Brian Cody. Well, you got the tactics spot on, uh, Marty. You'd have to say he had the players to carry out those tactics as well. But, I mean, has been very, very good since the start. They've completely uh, unhinged Kilkenny in the first half and, uh, you know, fully deserving of their victory here. Standing over the slither. Joe Cannon. Taps it over. And for the very first time, Joe Cannon shows a little bit of emotion because he knows the cup is heading westwards. And you would have to say, Marty, from the very start, you know, we saw a new Joe Cannon, extremely fit, Huge work rate all day, like as well as the scores, and that is something that he hasn't always shown, but brilliant today. Going back to gather is Paul Murphy. Ball comes for us, Andy Smith. Stepping away from Owen Larkin. Sending a diagonal ball, but there's nobody there except David Herity. Goalkeeper. 72 minutes play in Croke Park on a day when we expect a Kilkenny to win. But you are watching on RTE Live, the Sunday game, history being made, because for the very first time since the GA was founded in 1884, the Bob O'Keefe Cup, commemorating a man that was a native of Kilkenny, that won an All-Ireland with Leash, and was a former president, is going back, going for the first time westwards across the Shannon. The Volvo Ocean Race may be over in Galway, the ships may be gone out, but there's a new ship coming into port, and on it will be the name Bob O'Keefe. It is an emotional day for anybody who loves Galway hurling, a historic day, and you've watched it here. A tremendous day, and from the start, Marty, they took the game to Kilkenny, completely unhinged them, and I think great tactics they had, just one on one inside, inside the 20-metre line, and, you know, they picked the players out when they were in possession, there was no aim to strike either ball like Galway teams in the past, everything was done in measured tones, and, uh, you know, great credit going to Anthony Cunningham, and great credit going to the players, every one of them, and particularly the defence, they stay with the Kilkenny the players, Owen Larkin, TJ Reid, right, completely stuffed out of it, and, um, you know, once, half, once they got to half-time, while the game was won, and, uh, you know, bit by bit, they, they strangled uh, Kilkenny and uh, won by 10 points and fully deserved in the end. 
for Galway people all over the world, like Orla Callahan, daughter of Tex Callahan, who's part of the Galway backroom team, who's watching the game in Perth. And for everybody who's been watching the Sunday game live all over the world, you are watching a little bit of history, for this is Galway's first ever Leinster senior hurling title, defeating the All-Ireland champions on a full-time score of Galway. Two goals, 21 points, Kilkenny, 2-11.